I'm going to show you today how to set up the ASUS PG42UQ for the best settings for desktop, SDR mode, for gaming and for HDR. We'll start by opening up the main menu just by pressing the main button on the remote. We're going to go through each of the sections one by one to get to the best settings. So starting in the gaming menu, let's enable the uh, overclocking function. Select that to on you'll get a warning message saying you might get some flicker. The screen should then kick into overclocking mode. Um, you just need to go back in there then and select the max refresh rate. Move that up from 120 to 138 hertz. Once the screen is rebooted, just open up the menu again. You can go back into the overclocking section. You should see at the top right hand side there that it says uh, we're running at 138 hertz now. So that will give you a small but quite useful boost in motion clarity and frame rate support for gaming so you might as well have that enabled adaptive sync that should be on by default let's leave that turned on assuming you want to use variable refresh rates for your gaming game plus this is where you've got a selection of different options for things like the fps counter crosshair you can turn any of those on that you might like uh, for now we're just going to leave them off we're just going to set the screen up for now for desktop use game visual so by default the screen is running in the racing mode we're actually going to go down and select this into the user mode uh, you'll see at the top right it confirms we're now running in user mode once you're in there you've got the ability to uh, customize all the other settings we're going to save these for our own user mode rather than mess around with one of the presets so we'll leave that on user mode for now Shadow boost, that's off by default. You can choose to turn that on if you want for gaming. That will boost the gamma in the darkest bits of the content. So if you're having any trouble seeing shadow detail or dark content, by all means, turn that up a little bit. For now, we're going to leave that set to off. So they're the gaming settings, first of all. I'm going to come down now to the image section. Now you'll see the screen is set with a default 90% brightness. Uh, out of the box. We actually want to turn that down for desktop use. We want to get much nearer to 120 nits if we can. But actually what I'm going to do first is turn on the uniform brightness setting. So uniform brightness, uh, you'll see initially the brightness will now drop to 60. But what that will do is it will make sure that for all the brightness levels that you can set now, uh, the ABL feature, the automatic brightness limiter, will never need to be used. So no matter what the APL is, uh, no matter how much of the screen is bright, the size of your white windows, the size of your office documents or whatever, the backlight should never need to be dimmed. So you'll never see dimming depending on the size of your content. So that's going to be really useful for desktop applications, office use and everything like that. You can still reach a very nice high brightness if you want to all the way up to 200 nits. So for our purposes, we want to calibrate the screen to 120 nits brightness. So we're just going to lower this slightly by one setting to 59. After we've done the rest of the changes that we're going to make in a minute, that should return you illuminance very close to 120 nits. If you want to get to a brighter setting of 150 or maybe even 200 nits, you can use the other settings that we're mentioning uh, on the screen now as well. So uniform brightness is turned on, brightness is set at 59, leave contrast as it is, vivid pixel as it is, aspect ratio we don't need to change, we're going to use this full 3840 by 2160 resolution. Blue light filter, that's off by default. If you want to make the image warmer for whatever reason, you can use some of these other modes, but we're going to deliberately set the screen up to be at a 6500K white point, so we don't want to turn any of those on for now anyway. So that's the image section complete. Uh, now we're going to do the color menu. So the default mode is to operate in the full wide gamut, which is the DCI-P3 mode. If you want to work with sRGB, SDR, standard gamut content specifically, then you can enable this setting instead. That will emulate quite nicely the smaller sRGB color space. Now we expect a lot of users will probably want to do that. You know, you, you're going to have a better performance for sRGB and SDR content if you do so. Um, so for now, we're going to enable that. You can switch obviously between the two. So if you want to work with wide gamut content or you just prefer the more saturated, more vivid colors, then by all means switch back to DCI-P3. 
The color temperature will be defaulted to 6500K. Actually, for uh, optimizing the performance, we're going to enter the user mode now. And we're going to set the RGB channels to settings that will deliver us a 6500K white point uh, more accurately. So the default mode is, is fine if you want, but this will get you a little bit closer. So when you first enable this user mode in the color temperature, the screen does go noticeably more blue and cooler. So we're gonna have to turn a couple of these things down. So we're gonna leave the red channel at 100. We're gonna move the green channel down to 90. And we're gonna move the blue channel all the way down to 78. So we've got 100. 90, 78. Now that will re return you a white point that is very close to 6,500K, optimum for our requirements here for desktop use. We can leave saturation alone, six axis saturation we don't need to touch, and gamma, that is fine on the default 2.2 setting. That's gonna be closest to the 2.2 gamma that we want. So that's the color menu complete. No need to change anything in input select. Uh, you can change your favorites as you like. There are a, a last couple of things that we would importantly want to change in the system setup menu as well. So we're gonna come down to the, uh, scroll down the list and go in the screen protection section. So this is all those OLED protection measures. The ones that we're going to want to turn off will be screensaver. So turning that off will turn off the ASBL feature, the automatic static brightness limiter feature that would dim your screen depending on whether it detects static content. So by disabling that, you'll find that it's a much better experience for static desktop usage, office applications, and that kind of thing. We like to turn that off. You can leave it on if you like, but um, I think it's only really going to be useful and not distracting for perhaps gaming and multimedia. Pixel cleaning, that's a cycle to clean the screen. So we're just gonna leave that. We're not gonna run that specifically. We like to turn off the screen shift or screen move setting. Uh, that will just shift the image a couple of pixels every now and again. I find that really annoying for desktop use where you will notice it. So turn off screen move and the adjust logo brightness that is designed to dim logos that it detects from applications, videos, head up displays on games or whatever. Might be useful for those instances, but again, for desktop normal use, we're gonna to want to turn that off because again, it can be distracting. So we've disabled adjust logo brightness. We've turned off the screen saver and we've turned off the screen move. Obviously do that at your own risk. By doing so, you may increase your risk of image retention but generally, if you're careful on an OLED screen, you shouldn't need to worry. So that is it for all of the settings in that menu. If you want to game in STR mode, there's a couple of things that you might want to change from the settings that we've just gone through. The settings that we've just done are more for general and office type applications. If you're gonna game, you might want to come into the image section and turn off the uniform brightness. You can then use the brightness slider to get the image quite a lot brighter, but keep in mind that the ABL feature will kick in at certain circumstances. You're unlikely to notice that a lot in gaming and multimedia, so I don't think that's gonna be a problem, but it gives you the flexibility to uh, move the brightness up all the way up to 100. We'll put some recommended brightness settings on the screen as well that give you some uh, suggested levels, but that will give you a little bit more flexibility if you like a brighter image. The only other thing you might want to do is come into the color section and switch from the sRGB mode that we were using for desktop applications to the DCI-P3 mode. Now that will give you more saturated and vivid colors. A lot of people are gonna prefer that in games, even if the games were mastered deliberately in SDR, but I think that will give you uh, probably a preferable experience for your gaming and your multimedia. Everything else can stay as it is. The color temperature can stay in our configured user mode. That was close to 6,500K, that's fine. You may also then want to come back into the gaming section and do things like turn on some of the game plus options. You could of course set up one of the other game visual modes for your gaming to your liking. So you could go into one of these and perhaps set the, let's say the FPS mode up to the color 
the brightness and all the other settings for your gaming and then have the user mode configured for office applications and general use. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility, but I think the main things you'll want to do would be to disable uniform brightness and turn brightness to whatever you like and use the wider color space from the display color space setting, move that to DCI-P3. For HDR mode, all I've done is enable HDR in Windows. Now that activates the HDR mode on the screen, which you can see in the top right hand corner there, it says HDR mode. There's only a couple of settings available in HDR. First up in the image section, you will see that brightness is by default uh, locked out. So that will make sure that you can deliver the maximum peak brightness of the screen. We're gonna to wanna to come down to the HDR settings section and move this onto ASUS Cinema HDR mode. So that is gonna be the most accurate mode closest to a 6,500K white point. You can use the gaming mode if you want a slightly cooler setup. That will increase your peak brightness as well, but we prefer to use the cinema mode for this as well. The only other thing you might want to do in here is enable the brightness adjustable setting. If you do, you'll get a warning. And when you go back in the menu, you will see that the brightness slider is now available. So this might be useful if you wanted to cap your peak brightness for any reason, if you were gaming from up close and you found the peak brightness to become uncomfortable for any reason, you can lower this down to something, but generally you will just want to leave that at the maximum 100 to get the most out of the HDR on the screen. So we'll leave that at 100. HDR setting is set to cinema mode, as I say. The only other thing to check would be come into the color menu and the color temp. Now the 6,500K white point is preferable. There is a 10,000K mode that makes the screen very cool. It will increase your peak brightness, but I, I think most people will prefer the 6,500K setting. So we'll set that. Everything else is as it was before. You can leave overclocking on, adaptive sync on, play around with the other settings, but that's all you need to do for HDR. So that's all the settings for desktop SDR mode, for gaming and for HDR. I'll leave the links in the description below for the review of this screen and for other useful resources. Please remember to give us a like if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. And don't forget to subscribe for future updates and future reviews. I'll see you next time.